Hey guys, David Patrick Green, HackHollywood.com. Uh, this is going to be an interesting video because it's not a video that I ever planned and one that I really never would have wanted to make, but I think this might be one of the most important videos I ever do. And today's topic is what would you do if your life was completely changed on you? Like, what would you do if you lost your best friend? Would you live your life a little differently? Would you then say, oh my gosh, all the fear I have from people saying no to me and people, you know, blacklisting me or whatever other crazy fears you have, would you maybe let some of those go? Would you maybe act a little bit differently? Would you, like, what if your friend was somebody who, you know, took life uh, by the cojones and just sort of did whatever they felt like? What if they were that kind of an example to you? And you know, the reason I'm asking you these questions is because I get to find out what I would do if I lost my best friend. Because I, I lost my best friend today. Uh, his son called me and told me that he had passed away in his sleep. And <laughs> like I, I certainly have not even come close to processing it yet but because of who he was the first thing that came to mind was you know what would you do and now it's not what would you do it's now what will you do so now I get to ask myself what will I do now that I can see how um, not really so much that I don't want to say um, you know, colloquial things like life is precious. I mean, life is whatever you think it is, but it's certainly limited, and you start to realize what the biggest consequences are compared to what the smallest consequences are. So we all have a lot of fears about doing things, especially things that I suggest to do. You know, talking to producers, talking to directors, people are so scared of that stuff approaching people, calling them, you know, but what's the worst thing that's going to happen to you? You're certainly not going to lose your best friend because of it. You're not going to cause anyone else's, you know, to, to get a terminal disease or, you know, you're really, nothing bad literally is going to happen. It's really the only bad thing that might happen is you get your feelings hurt if you actually allow your feelings to be part of what somebody else does. Meaning somebody says no to you, so that hurts your feelings. Why? Because we all want to be liked. But if you can put what's important to you above being liked by a bunch of strangers, which is who we're talking about trying to connect with, then you can actually forget all of this disappointment or consequences because in actuality, there are no consequences to approaching people that you don't know, but that you can help and serve. In fact, it, like I said, the, it's the opposite of a consequence. It actually helps you and it helps them. If you approach them with a desire to serve them, to help them, and you figure out how you can actually do that, then even if they say no to you, it's still a good thing for both you and that person. Because if you have considered why it's good for you to help somebody or speak to them, like what you have to offer as opposed to making it all about you all the time, if you consider that and you approach them with that in mind, they may not know it yet because they don't know you, but as they get to know you, they can find out that you have something of value to help them and so that's why it's always a win-win when you approach somebody new when you approach a stranger it's always a win-win and so if you've been holding back if you have fears that something bad's gonna happen why don't you just think about it and try to put yourself in the position of do you, do you want to look back on your life or let's say you have a friend and they are sick. Do you want to tell your friend or your loved one, you know, I'm not really doing much with my life. I'm not doing as much as I could be doing. 
I'm asking other people what I should do and really I just need to ask myself. Do you want to be the person who tells your friend or your loved one or you know whoever's rooting for you that you're not you know you're you're chickening out on just the simplest stuff? I'm sure you're going to say no, of course not. So if you have to try to imagine a loss and try to imagine how it might change you. And I'll cuz I'll tell you right now, I, I had a couple of things that I was actually fretting about uh, calling a couple of producers uh, on behalf of a client and I was worried about it like oh my gosh what am I gonna say and I know what to say I actually teach people what to say but you know there's still a small part of me that I have to acknowledge has that childhood fear of approaching strangers the the childhood fear um, and you know what, the, the biological fear that we all have, which is, you know, that, that something that we don't know about can actually hurt us, kill us, right? That's the fear at the watering hole that the gazelle feels every time they bend their head over to drink. I mean, think of how bad it is for the gazelles. There could be an alligator in the watering hole, you know, inches from their snout in the murky water. And there could be a lion hiding behind that rock that they are looking at and so try getting a drink under those circumstances and yet what do they do they go and they get a drink why because it's important to them it's biologically important to them but we as humans have satisfied our basest biological needs for the most part if you live in an you know an affluent country where we have so much it's it's ridiculous we throw things away that still have the tags on them that's how bad it is for us or how good it is for us it's really not good though right so you you don't have a biological imperative anymore now you have you know as Maslow's hierarchy of needs says you now have the fulfillment impera imperative so you want to fulfill yourself well if you said that you want to be an actor and you want to fulfill yourself then god damn it just go do it stop asking permission Stop wondering, stop thinking about and trying to analyze, uh, if I do this, this is going to happen. The only thing you should imagine is w what the results are that you want, the positive results, and what are the things you can do to try and get those positive results. You have no control over the results themselves, so you can't worry about that. You just have to devise a plan that is the most direct and the most action oriented and stop spending a lot of time thinking about it. Just think about it for a second and just come up with the idea and go do it and see what happens because there's no such thing as failure. It's funny, people talk about failing. There's no such thing as failure. There's only learning. Like no matter what you do, something happens and you can say it's a win or a loss but that's a stupid way to look at everything because a loss isn't a loss unless that's the last time you ever play. You know, y you got to look at things not on a transactional basis. You got to look at things as a big picture. Every transaction has a, some kind of result. If you want to try and, you know, boil down your life to a sporting event where there's a winner and a loser, and those are just names, I mean, Again, if you're thinking of your life as something to be enjoyed, then the fact you're out there playing a sport is the win, okay? So don't get caught up in the fact that, oh, somebody beat me in tennis or somebody beat me in soccer. Who cares? You're out there running around in the grass having a great time, and you have the power to think that. So, guys, um, back to, you know, square one. Ask yourself, what, what would you do? if you lost something really, really important to you? Would it change your perspective? What are you gonna ask yourself? What are you gonna to say to yourself when you're on your deathbed? Are you gonna say, oh, I wish I had played it safer. Oh, you know, I wish I had never heard no from anyone. I wish that I only did things that I knew people would like me for immediately. Not only, <laughs> you're not gonna give people the chance to like you over the long term. They have to like you immediately and they have to love everything you do. Is that really how, is that what you want your legacy to be? Um, I hope not. I hope you 
try harder. I hope you try different things. I hope you put yourself out there. I hope, look, what does an actor do? I mean, if you can't do it in real life, how would you be able to do it as an actor? You probably have huge gaps in your acting skills if you can't see yourself taking a chance that somebody might say no to you. Because I don't even want to say taking a chance because you're not taking a chance. There's no risk involved in saying, hi, my name is David Patrick Green. I'd like to help you out. I'd like to clean your toilets in your office uh, so, uh, so I can see how the production process works or whatever it is, right? So don't, don't think about any of this as taking chances. What this is, the big chance is not taking a chance. The big risk is not taking a chance, is doing nothing. The big, the big risk is inaction. Okay, guys, so please take action. Don't spend your time on social media, and especially not on your time on social media trying to develop an acting career because there ain't no... Uh, Google acting careers on social media. See if you find one because, <laughs> uh, to the best of my knowledge, there ain't any. And, yeah, so casting directors are on social media, and maybe that's how they want you to contact them because guess what? They don't want to get to know you because they don't know who you are. So the, the only way you'll ever get them to really want to know you is, so, is if you get in front of them so they can actually get a chance to know you because whatever you post on Facebook isn't the real you. It's, it's, it's your brand. It's your marketing. It's, you know, it's the image you are trying to portray, which is bullshit. We all know that. I mean, have you looked at social media lately? Have you seen what people post? It's only like the most glamorous, amazing parts of their lives. They don't put the dreary, mundane stuff, and they don't put the depressing stuff, unless, of course, someone dies, and then they post this long eulogy about their loved one that we have never met, and we all go, oh my gosh, so sorry, you know, and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, I know for a lot of you guys that, that seems normal to you, but ask yourself if that brings you closer to people, or if maybe you should develop some serious, deep relationships with the people who you want to be in your future career and probably personal life as well, okay? Develop deep relationships with successful people who are doing what you would like to be doing and you will never have to look at social media again. Now, if you're addicted to it, that's a whole different ball game. If you wanna look at it, that's fine. I'm not even gonna get into that, but it's not gonna do anything long-term for your career unless you want a career in social media, in which case, Spend all your time on there if you'd like. That's fine by me. But right now, I'm, uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm sitting at a little zen fountain that you might be able to hear trickling in the background. I will let you hear some of the tranquil babbling brook sounds. You can hear that, I take it. And I just stumbled onto this Zen garden, which is a great place to be when you are going through a period of loss. I'll even take a shot of me next to the fountain. I'll try not to fall in, but isn't that, isn't that nice? So look, if you're having troubles, I can empathize. I'm having troubles, but for my friend, he was the example, mm. oh, he was the example of all examples. He was stoic, he always did the right thing. He was my best friend since I was 19 years old, and that's a long time for those of you who haven't figured it out. And, uh, you know, he was gone in a flash. He was gone in a flash, and so he's the perfect person for me to have now that I can I can officially lecture to you guys because now you know my my mantra if I ever have a question or a hesitation or a second thought about something my mantra is what would James do and you know he was just the example to everyone his friends his family everybody I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone not one person ever have a major complaint about him or an unkind word. Okay, so <laughs> this is what I get to compare myself to now 
And so guess what? I'm going to take up the challenge. I'm going to try and live my life a little, a little better with fewer complaints, with more action, and, and be of service to my friends, my families, and people that I want to get involved with. You know, people that I want to work with, I'm going to offer my services to them. And I'm not going to be scared because I know that I'm helping them. If you know you're helping someone, what are you waiting for? Just think of a, an old lady who fell down in the street. Are you going to ask yourself, oh, I wonder if she'll be unhappy if I pick her up? Or someone who has a heart attack, oh, geez, I wonder if they'll like it if I save their lives. No, you just go and do it. Why? Because if they yell and scream at you, you're going to go, shut up, I'm giving you CPR, <laughs> right? You're not going to worry about it because you know you're helping them. It's the same thing if you walk into somebody's office and you say, hi, I'm here to help you. And they're like, get the F out of my office. This is a terrible time. Then you're, you're, you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. That's fine. Um, I'll come back tomorrow because I'm still going to help you. You know, you may not get it right now. You may not want to hear it right now, but I am going to help you. And I, <laughs> I'm going to keep coming back until you tell me to never come back again. And that is fine. If, you know, some people can't get over themselves. They can't get over how uh, angry they are or they can't get over the idea of control, right? And there's a lot of companies out there, you know, by referral only or whatever. Well, you know, that would be a shame if they only heard from people through referrals. Uh, because there's a lot of amazing people with a lot of amazing things that they need. Like imagine if the CEA agent that says, by referral only. Well, if they're lying there having a heart attack, uh, do they want CPR only from a referral or do they want it from somebody who can actually help them right then? Ponder that for a second. And I'm going to go do some stuff now that I've been putting off. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. Uh, you know the drill. You know the social media drill. Uh, do it and look, live your life to its fullest capacity and don't ask anybody for permission. Just come up with things, do them, see what happens, make adjustments and do, do it until you're dead. I was gonna say till you're done or dead, both, okay? Keep doing it and you'll get there. Talk to you soon.